Hello and welcome to this presentation. Today we're going to be covering a simple story of going through the process of creating a brand new view and leading on to the creation of a gadget. This video is going to allow us to look at a number of different steps as we explore the process of creating a gadget. So we're going to be looking first of all at the idea of a new view, understanding how they sit underneath uh, most of the structures that you see uh, inside this HCRM and act as a way of bringing data together. So we'll look at the process of creating that view. We'll then go on to look at the process of creating one of the types of intermediate data sources which are then used by interactive dashboards. The easiest way to do this is to create a, a report that uses the view and then we can go on to then look at how that report then acts as a data source for an interactive dashboard gadget. So we're covering a number of different topics, but the point is that we're joining these separate topics up into a single uh, procedure. So let's have a look at this idea of creating a brand new view, first of all. Inside Sage CRM, Everything depends on views. It doesn't matter what version of Sage CRM that you're using. We still have this fundamental view that what happens is that um, interactions with the database, uh, when we're selecting information, uh, aggregating it and carrying out calculations and derivations of information, it's a view that interacts with the database. And we are then going to be talking to that view, whether it's for the purposes of mail merge or whether it's the purposes of creating a group or whether it's the purpose of ultimately creating uh, something like a list gadget within the interface. We're going to find that views fall into three different types. They're either going to be core views, which are uh, views which are fundamental to the operation of the system and cannot and must not be altered. You then have system views, which we strongly recommend that you do not change because they are used by the system. And there may be some views that uh, you may want to change and there are circumstances that uh, it's advantageous to do so. But generally, when customizations are being carried out, new features like a new gadget for example you'd want to create your own new view and anything that is created by the system administrator is a user defined view and they are views that you have control over and you have the ability to change and so we're going to be looking at the creation of a brand new user view and uh, this is actually the standard recommendation that we have to so create your own views for your customization to avoid any issues with system features. And you'll see that that's something that props up, comes up at, with a, as a prompt within inside the software as well as we, as we do the work. Here you can see that I've got a log on screen. Logged on. And we've got uh, the main interface. You can see that I happen to be looking at an interactive dashboard. And uh, this is the welcome dashboard that the system administrator sees by default. I'm going to go across into the administration area and I'm going to go into customization and look at an existing view. So you can see that I've come into administration customization. I'm going to choose the opportunity area and come down into uh, once we're in customization to look at views. And we can see that there are a number of different views present. So I'm going to look at uh, an existing uh, report view, one that is used uh, by default for purposes of reporting, and we can see that there is a V report opportunity. So this is a system view. And if I look at this particular view, we can see that it has uh, different uh, fields in here that are derived or concatenated. If I switch back into the presentation, we can see a similar view called V list opportunity also uh, demonstrates a number of interesting features. So we've got joins taking place. That's an interesting uh, thing to think of here is that 
it's possible within a view to create joins to any data source that the database can see. So essentially you can put here a fully referenced uh, data source in here to allow us to access perhaps a table in another database or perhaps um, in a joined database, something that is linked to a different database server entirely. So long as you can see that, you can create a view that straddles uh, multiple, not only multiple tables, but also multiple tables within different databases as well. You can see that a view uh, can derive and calculate information. And so here you can see calculation, both derivations of concatenated data and uh, data that has been calculated is being used in here with aliases being referenced within the structure of uh, the view. In the view that I'm looking at with inside the system here, which is vReport Opportunity, we can see this in the same way. So we can see the use of uh, standard database uh, functions being used to allow us to trim and uh, transform the data as we need to. I'm going to pick this up, this particular set of code up, because I want to use this for the creation of my own uh, view. So whatever view that you're using, you can use this uh, for this purpose. Now, if I was to start to edit this view, you'd see that I'd get a message telling me that this is a system view and therefore it's not recommended. Uh, to change because, as the message says, it may adversely affect system behavior and may be overwritten by the next system upgrade. We see that in the software itself. So if I now click change, we'd see this in place and we have that warning coming up saying that I shouldn't be changing the data. Now I'm going to not change this view. Uh, I want to be able to understand what's going on in here. So I'm going to cancel this. And now what I'll do is I'll switch back up a level and I'm going to make sure that I can create my own new view. I'm going to call this V custom um, opportunity report. So I've got a view, I've got a brand new V custom opportunity report going in. And you can see that um, it started to write this for me. Um, it's warning me a number of things about, uh, on the screen about a number of different columns that have to be included. And I'll mention that in a moment. But I just want to paste in uh, the SQL that I'd copied across. Now, I'm just copying and pasting from an existing view to create my own. Um, I could have been using a uh, SQL uh, view designer within inside the management console, but I'm I was making the assumption that you're familiar with that and this is the SQL that uh, we're wanting to use uh, for the purpose of this particular view. Uh, there are other lessons within the YouTube channel that talk about the creation of views right from scratch. Now I'm going to mark this as a reports view. This is because I want to ultimately create a report and that in turn that report will be used as the data source for the interactive dashboard gadget. So I'm going to choose save. Now please note you had that I had that message at the top of the screen explaining that certain columns have to be included. This is very worthwhile remembering and being aware of. Let me switch over into the presentation uh, to, to talk about that. So what you see here is the creation of a new um, new view and when you are creating a new view you have to be aware that there are required columns in views. This is because the columns are governed or the the entities that are mentioned inside the view are governed by security. And for each of the entities that are governed by security you have to make sure that the columns that are referenced within the different security policies are included so that the, uh, the SQL generated automatically by Sage CRM will actually make sense. There will be reference to those columns made by uh, CRM. So you have to include these columns with inside views. 
And if I switch over into uh, the interface again, uh, here I'm going to uh, actually uh, now use a different user. So I've called the Opportunities tab, and we can see that we have got the listing of opportunities here. Now, knowing that um, this, this uh, page actually makes use of the uh, view that is referenced here, which is the V list opportunity. I'd like to look at how the SQL that you see here, which you can imagine that if you were selecting information from this view, you would look at something like select star from V list opportunity, would be the generation of that. But um, remember, these are columns that are used by the security policy. And so when we look at a screen like this, um, when we call up the view that is using that, or, or using a screen that is using that view, the SQL that is actually generated is changed dynamically by Sage CRM. We can see this dynamic change if I switch over into uh, a text editing program so I can open up the SQL logs. Now you can see here that I've got an empty log in front of me, and this is today's log. Um, and if I refresh this page and recall up the opportunities page, we can now see the log being generated. Now I'm just going to lift this code and create a new document uh, so I can uh, narrow this down as to what's going on. And we can see here that the generated SQL uh, is uh, including the columns that are referenced within the underlying view, but you can see how columns like created by primary user ID, sector, are being automatically added in to change the way in which the SQL statement is, is used. So instead of simply being a select star from VList opportunity, we now see a whole set of um, predicates being used, where conditions being used, to restrict the rows, and that's the security policies in place. And that's why we need to have these columns inside the view. Now that we've used and created the view, we need to then prepare it for use inside the interactive dashboard. The interactive dashboard can include lots of different types of gadgets, everything from calendar gadgets through to task lists, through to um, very useful types called websites, which allow us to call our own HTML pages uh, and embed all sorts of interesting behavior there. But the, the types that I'm focused in on now would be the list, list gadget and potentially the chart gadget, because they ultimately are types that are uh, much more under our control in terms of the types of data sources that we're creating. And this gadgets need to use as their data source a saved search, an advanced find, or a dynamic group, or a report. And it's the report that um, I want to, um, to look at now, because we've created a view, we've marked that view as suitable for use inside a report, so we can now build our report. So back inside CRM's interface, so here I'm looking at the, uh, the views that we've created, and I created uh, one called uh, V Custom Opportunity Report. So if I look at my view here, and I marked it as a reports view. So we've got, got V Custom Opportunity Report, uh, is what we're looking at, and I can now go into the reports area. I'll do this underneath sales reports. I can start to create a brand new report. Again, uh, this type of report, I'm going to call this my training report. This type of report, um, or how to build reports and different types, they're covered by short videos, uh, again, on site the, the YouTube channel. Uh, but I'm just going to look at the idea of training reports, and, uh, and this one is going to be using uh, our, um, our little V uh, custom uh, opportunity report view that we created. 
and we can see all the different columns that can be brought in here. So I'm going to select a few columns to be used, who it's assigned to, uh, and I'll bring in so the description in here, and stage, status, and I think we'll also bring in Let's see if we can bring in the person information. So let's have a look at the uh, person uh, who is included here. So we've got the details of the report. Um, I might want to create a restriction on that. So I might actually want to uh, allow for the idea of narrowing down some behavior. And so I could uh, uh, look at when the target closed by date is being used. So I can even that add into the search criteria. I'm creeping that as a very nice and simple report. Um, and uh, we can now, uh, and you can see it's a type list. I'm going to continue. I'm not going to bother with any of the other settings. I'm not going to bother with the search criteria. I'm not going to bother with any of the other heading settings because the point is that I want to use this only inside an interactive dashboard. Um, and uh, this is a, a simple way of pulling data out into the system. So I've got this training report now present, and uh, I can go ahead and I can use that report inside the dashboard. So up in here, I can look at my dashboard. I'm going to create a brand new dashboard. And I'm going to call this training dashboard. I'm not including any standard gadgets in here, and there are other videos that explain all the different types of gadgets and how they can be used. But I've got a blank dashboard now, and I can create now a new gadget of a different type. And the type that I'm using is a list gadget based on the opportunity. And we can see these are the different data sources that are available. In fact, I mentioned that there were four different types of data sources available. Um, these are the uh, these are going to be uh, gadgets which are reports. They're going to be uh, gadgets based on saved searches, uh, dynamic groups um, as an advanced finds. We only have here an example of a saved search and a collection of reports. And the report that I'm interested in is my training report, which I look down and there is my training report. I can select that and I can then include the columns that I want to with inside my gadget. For the gadget, I have to choose a default action, whether I want to run the report associated with uh, the data source uh, and what action I want to take. Um, I like the idea that I can choose here um, the ability to carry out different types of work. So if I was working in the context of, of these opportunities, I may want to be um, telephoning um, the different uh, contacts and driving appointments, and perhaps even, as you can see here, including the possibility of including the workflow directly here. Creating a workspace for my different opportunities that I can see. Now, in fact, these are not my opportunities. These are general items. If I uh, search by these, you can see these are the different opportunities in place. But I now have the ability to uh, carry out um, actions directly from the dashboard based on that underlying view. And that view could have included information from, as I said, tables that are not necessarily inside Sage CRM, but I could be bringing them together. If, they're, if you can use them inside a report, you can in use them inside the dashboard.